Volt is labeled as a full-stack framework. What does it mean for a framework to be considered full-stack? In our last two episodes, we covered lots of back-end topics like the model and task objects, and today I'll demonstrate how Volt can be helpful for front-end development also. I've built the card guessing game you see here. This involves some front-end interaction, but not too much activity on the back-end. How would we build an interactive UI like this using Volt? Before starting my work on the front end, I will need some kind of object to hold the game's state in. This will be for storing simple things like the number of points the user has, or the cards in the deck, or what kind of card the dealer is currently holding. Let's make a basic model called Game. I'm not going to persist this model to the database ever. Instead, in our example, the game object is going to live in the page store as a temporary object that will last for the duration of gameplay. Refreshing the page will cause the game to end. If you're unfamiliar with Volt models, take a look at episode 2 where I cover Volt models in depth. Now let's define the model. The first field that we're going to store will be the value of the card that the dealer is holding. Then we're going to add a field to hold the number of points earned for the current game. We're also going to add a field to hold the shuffled cards in. Lastly, I'm going to add some code to handle resetting the object after a round of gameplay. For simplicity, our deck's only going to hold 5 cards. You could just as easily make a 52 card deck, though. Now we can make a method to start the round. This will shuffle the cards and pick a new secret card for the player to guess. We'll also return self to make the method chainable. Moving on to the controller, I'll initialize a new game model when the page is loaded. I attach it to the page store because I don't want to persist across page refreshes or save the game in the database. At this point, we should be able to iterate over all the cards and check the game state now from the view. Let's make sure everything was loaded correctly by running this test code and checking it out in the browser. It looks like everything's working properly. Let's press refresh a few times to make sure that it shuffles correctly. Okay, everything works. But we need to make a better view for the user interface. Let's do that now. Volt has a generator for scaffolding views that follows the syntax volt g view and then the name of the view you want to generate, which is card in our case. This generates the base HTML and Ruby files for the view. So what's going on here? If we're building a view, why did Volt generate a controller for us? Aren't those things completely different in the MVC world? Part of the reason for this is that Volt is not a true MVC framework. It's actually an MVVM framework. MVVM stands for Model, View, View Model. Our controllers are actually view models. Views each get a controller to manage logic and state. And this is similar to architectures with frameworks like Knockout or AngularJS. Don't worry if this sounds confusing. It's actually very simple. Just remember that each HTML view in Volt gets a controller, and the controller becomes a place to coordinate your view logic. You can use the controller to store variables and methods related to the UI because each view gets its own controller. This keeps it easy to organize. Now that our controllers and views are all scaffolded out, we can start thinking about how we're going to style the cards. I found a nice project on GitHub that does exactly what we need. It lets us style the playing cards by adding CSS classes to HTML tags. 
I changed the main index page to be a bit more useful than that test page I showed you earlier. Did you notice the card tag here? Volt uses the convention of writing an HTML tag named after the corresponding view, with a colon in front of it. This is going to load the card's yet-to-be-written HTML template, and also load an instance of the card controller we saw earlier. We can pass variables in using the HTML attributes you see here, and then access them inside of the controller later on. Let's take a look at the card template, and then the card controller. What you see here is the HTML that will be rendered when you make a card tag inside the application. The first thing I'd like to point out is this adders object right here, which stands for attributes. In the previous scene, I passed in an HTML attribute on our card tag called rank. The way that you would access that from within your view is by accessing members on that variable, as you see here. Another thing worth mentioning is this eClick event. Whenever this DOM element is clicked, it's going to call this method on our controller. We haven't defined the guest card method yet, so let's go into the card controller and define it now. In a similar fashion to Rails controllers, we can define our helper methods under the private line. And just like in the view, we have access to the attributes object, and we also have access to the current game object that we defined in the main controller. As you can see here, if the guess is a match for the current card, we tell the user that they won, award them 10 points, and then we reset the current round. And there you go. We now have a fully functional card guessing game. Hopefully this gives you a better understanding of Volt views and how views relate to controllers within the framework. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Also, don't forget to sign up for our newsletter to be updated about future episodes. Thanks for watching.